Cool football fans, Chris Terrell here with Rotopros.com to bring you another NFL video. Before I get into the video, I want to tell you a little bit about Rotopros. So if you're not a member, you can head over to the website. This is where you're going to find um, our, fr our free articles every week. Uh, we got a little video here going over Rotopros as well. My cash article is up. GPP article comes out on Saturdays. If you want to get in, get a free trial, get access to all of our content. Go to the yellow sign up button, top right hand corner. We've got three different options for you weekly membership, monthly membership, and yearly membership with a three day trial for the weekly and seven day trial with the monthly and yearly membership. That gets you access into our Slack chat. First of all, um, this is kind of the core of our community. Um, so this is our NFL channel. So there's a channel dedicated to each and every sport. So throughout the week, I'm posting stats, updated stats, um, stuff that I'm working on on the sheet. Like this is a quarterback versus position that I've added to the sheet recently. Um, going and looking at each and every week fantasy points against quarterback. Um, posting the leaders and average um, DraftKings points, target leaders, running back touch leaders, that sort of thing. Uh, at Roto Pros, we cover right now NFL, college football. We're doing some European League basketball. We've got PGA, NASCAR, UFC, European League soccer, uh, Champions League soccer. We got a whole bunch more going on. League of Legends when that those seasons come back, as well as MLB, NBA, NHL. If there's a sport out there that's covering DFS on DraftKings or FanDuel, we've got you covered. In this video series, I'm going to be looking at cash games versus GPPs. In video number one here, we're going to concentrate on cash games and how I use my sheet to really put together my cash game lineups each week. It starts on the team matchup tab. Before I ever get into the individual positions here at the bottom, I start in the team matchup tab, and it's really just to narrow down the teams that I'm looking at focusing on for cash games. So the first thing I'm looking at here is the team total. Two that stand out right away, Buffalo, Arizona in Week 10, as well as Seattle and the Rams. Um, there are six games with about 50 or more points uh, projected. That is from a Tuesday update, so that will be updated as we go into the weekend. And then I like to compare those Vegas totals with the actual data the teams have put together this season. So we've got Houston, 24.1 points per game they've scored, um, and Cleveland has given up 29.6 for a total of 53.8. Pretty close on the other side, gives us a total of 56. So that 52.5 total seems a bit low, seeing as both of these are over. And that's one thing I look at also from a betting standpoint, um, is possibly betting the over here, which is 52.5, as the data points me both teams versus both defenses to an over there. Green Bay, you can see, also stands out as they are averaging 31.6 points. Jacksonville's given up 30.9 for 62.5. So if things go right for Green Bay, I think we could definitely see that total going over now. Keep in mind that Jacksonville does not score a lot. Uh, Green Bay does not give up a lot, um, right around 25.5 points per game, which is under 50. So that is where we really start breaking it down a little bit more. But that's a couple things to look at in terms of points per game, comparing that to the Vegas totals. I also like looking at uh, pace, teams that higher pace so lower number in green here like fourth third those are the teams that put the most plays out per game or it's actually seconds per play so they're going to run more plays more plays in a game equals more opportunity more opportunity equals a higher floor for the players that we're going to eventually be targeting red zone ranking we're going to see this on the individual player tabs as well but we're going to look at this um, this is just more into the opportunity side of things um, in terms of teams which score more in the red zone. So as you can see here, Cleveland is sixth in terms of their offense scoring touchdowns in the red zone, while Houston is dead last. So that looks good for Cleveland. Um, it's not necessarily going to mean we want Cleveland players in cash games, but it just sort of points us in that direction right off the bat. These are things I will also refer back to once we start narrowing down our individual players. So the other thing I like to look at is the fantasy points against position, see which positions teams um, you know, give up fantasy points to. So as you can see here, Houston is outside the top 20, actually outside the top 23, um, in every in fantasy points against every single position. The other team that's outside the top 20 in every position is Jacksonville. So in that morning slate, targeting against Jacksonville and possibly Houston um, is something that we're definitely going to want to look into more once we dig into the individual players. 
positions. So keep that in mind. So now that we've got, you know, we want to come down and look at maybe the afternoon slate a little bit. We look at the Rams versus Seattle. Seattle has given up the most points per game to quarterbacks as well as wide receivers. So then maybe we want to look at either <clears throat> a combination of Goff and some wide receivers as a cash game play, maybe just the wide receivers. But either way, we probably want a piece of that LA Rams passing game while it is probably more of a GPP play for Seattle versus the Rams because the Rams are second in fantasy points against quarterback and wide receiver. So maybe Russell Wilson is off our cash game radar this week. We'll talk about that here in a bit. But those are some stats that can definitely point you in cash games versus GPP when looking at quarterbacks, wide receivers. Same for running backs. Um, Jacksonville versus, you know, their running back. Robinson might be a good play because Green Bay's given up the second most fantasy points. <clears throat> Okay, moving on to the individual positions now that we've narrowed some teams down. We start at the quarterback position. Um, a couple things, obviously, that we look at is the Vegas information spread. So uh, in terms of let's look at the top two, we can see Arizona-Buffalo looks like it's going to be a lot closer game and a lot higher scoring than Green Bay-Jacksonville, who's minus 13, Green Bay is minus 13.5, a little bit lower total. Green Bay's obviously, because of the large spread, is projected for a few more points. That doesn't take Aaron Rodgers out of the running for me whatsoever, um, but it could lead to a heavy run. You know, if the blowout comes early, Rodgers gets maybe just one, two touchdowns and 200, 220 yards. I don't think that's going to be enough to pay off his price tag. We're kind of looking for that 300 plus, maybe two, three touchdowns and a heavy passing attack. So that's maybe one reason why I would fade Rodgers just based off Vegas info alone is that maybe it turns into a running game script moving over into the stats side of things we'll look at the passing stats here we obviously looking at passing attempts we want a quarterback that throws lots of volume is number one volume and consistency for cash games so passing attempts now with the NFL this year there's a lot of running quarterbacks so we're going to want to look at rushing attempts as well and most of all I'm looking at total yards per game that combines your rushing yards per game and your passing yards per game for quarterbacks and gives you the total so we got Russell Wilson number one here 350.8 total yards per game Kyler Murray right behind him at 334.1 Kyler Murray, uh, the next column over here that I look at for cash games, I want to compare how, especially now that we're nine weeks into the season, we're now into week 10, I want to look at how a quarterback, or any player for that matter, has performed for the season versus the last four games. So I want to look at recent form. So we got DraftKings points per game on the season versus the last four. So Kyler Murray stands out right away. He is averaging six more points per game over the last four games versus his season totals. Now, using that data as well, you want to take that a little bit further and break it down and kind of confirm that. Definitely go to the DK Trends tab, which I've added over the last couple of weeks. I have sorted this by uh, quarterbacks and average points per game right now. But again, if you can, if you go and make your own copy of the sheet, you will be able to sort this however you wish. You'll be able to, you know, add some columns, stuff like that. But right now, we're looking at Kyler Murray, 41 points, 41.9 points on DK last week against Miami, 5.4x value he returned versus Seattle in Week Seven, 41.1 points, 5.8 value. So this is where we can really start breaking down and seeing for ourselves that consistency, not just the overall number. So as you can see, looking at just Kyler Murray, and in terms of cash games, we're looking for about 3x value. So we got a 50k um, salary cap. 3x means we're looking overall from our whole entire line of about 150 points um, as kind of our floor to cash in cash games. So we're looking for that from each of our individual players. It used to be about 2.5x, um, but that has changed uh, with the high scoring nature of the NFL this season. What that means for on the individual player level, we start breaking down Kyler Murray as we go across here and look at every week. Week 4 at 3.4x return on value at 7k was the lowest value he has returned all season and that is still terrific for cash games. He has put, if we go look at his last few games, 5.4x, 5.8x, 4x, 4.2x. So since that 3.4, he's put up 4x in every single game. I absolutely love that for cash games. That is extreme consistency and a very high ceiling as well. So those are a few things I'm looking at on the, you know, from quarterbacks that I'm looking at for cash games. Um, again, we've got the team statistics here that we went over in the matchups tab just to kind of reaffirm things. Arizona's third in pace. Love it. They've got 
top 10 in offensive line, so he's getting protected when he's running and passing. Love it. They're fifth in the red zone, so they're scoring touchdowns when they get down the red zone. Love it. And opponent versus position, um, Buffalo ranks 17th in fantasy points against quarterback. If you want to break that down further, go down to the bottom tabs and scroll over and find the defense versus position. Scroll quarterbacks is first up here. You can come and you can sort. High to low just puts the ranking, so we're looking at the worst defenses up top. Buffalo doesn't really, you know, they're right there in the middle of the pack in terms of fantasy points against, um, in terms of rushing yards per game. They're not giving up a whole bunch, um, but, you know, more than league average, which kind of fits, plays into uh, Kyler there as well. So if you want to break the defense versus position points down a little bit further, definitely head over to this tab. And I've created one new tab so that we're not just looking at season rankings. We can break that down here as well into week by week what each defense is giving up to opposing teams' quarterbacks. Uh, opponents will eventually be on this list, so it's a little more, so it's a little easier just to kind of pick out. But this is a lot better than just looking at a total season number. It also gives us the ranking over the last four weeks versus the season total. So as you can see, two that stand out right away. We already knew Houston was bad against quarterbacks, 22.8 fantasy points per game, DK points, which is 25th uh, ranked in the league to quarterbacks. They've been even worse lately. 28.8 over the last four. It's actually three games over the last four weeks. <clears throat> that ranks dead last. The other one that stands out is Cincinnati. Again, they had a bye week, so it's only a three-game sample size over those last four weeks. But they're giving up about six more points per game to quarterbacks over the last four weeks, three games for them, than they have on the season. These are some trends that I like to look at, and this is for the QB position only. I will be adding this for the running back, wide receiver, tight end, um, fantasy points against position as well but uh, I wanted to get quarterbacks out there first it's also a little bit easier in terms of formulas on the back end so moving into the running back position same story here we want volume and consistency we're looking at the Vegas totals um, I always want a favorite versus you know Vegas isn't always going to be right but looking at the favorites gives you a better game script for running backs when a team's ahead obviously they're going to run more um some teams don't, but almost every team will just to kind of run the clock down, protect protect their lead. So I'm looking for, in the Vegas, I want a high total for sure, but I also want a favorite. Um, like, for instance, James Robinson, if we scroll over, he's got a terrific matchup versus Green Bay. Problem is, what is his volume going to be like on a week where they are 13.5 point favorites expected to get blown out of the water? That doesn't smell safety for me in cash games. I will talk about James Robinson a little bit more when we get into the GPP video. But for now, Aaron Jones is the first one that stands out. Alvin Kamara right here at the top. They're both big favorites, both 50, uh, 50 plus Vegas totals there. So we start getting into the statistics here. And there's a lot of statistics for running backs because they are also pass catchers as well as rushers. Um, a lot more than receivers are rushers and pass rushers as well so or pass rushers pass catchers so volume again number one we're looking for a lot of volume then first thing i'm looking at so you got rushing red zone rushing receiving red zone receiving and total touches from or, you know scrimmage yards and touches so touches per game is number one so we're looking for guys that get a lot of volume so that's the number one thing i'm looking at here from a running back um, and then from there, are they getting a lot of touches? Great. Are they productive on those touches? Then I'm starting to look at yards per game. That's total scrimmage yards, that's receiving yards, and um, rushing yards combined. So then I want to look at snap count. I want to make sure that my running back is on the field for, let's say, at least 60% of its team snaps and then we've got last four here as well and then touches this is something i do for the running back position is look at touch share um so if you come down here and you want to break this down a little bit more what this means essentially is christian mccaffrey gets 81.3 percent of all the carolina running back touches 82.4 percent over the last four games <clears throat> that's on there for every player if you want to break this down further Again, back down to the bottom, there's a ton of tabs. need to be utilizing these um, if you want to use my sheets to, you know, the best of your ability, you know, for research purposes and doing better. There's a ton of tabs. Go to the running back touch share tab. This gives you how many touches and the percentage of that team's running back touches for each week, as well as some totals and averages. You can start 
comparing things a little bit more on a week to week basis to see where like as you can see James Robinson we talked about his touch share going up 4% over the last 4 weeks well week 1 17 touches 19 touches in week 2 17 21 18 16 so he was averaging right around that 16 or sorry right around that 18 17 18 touches per game last two games 26 25 so that um, is definitely gone up. That's something that stands out to me. Again, not going to be a cash play for me. So that running back touch share tab, definitely key. You can go back to the defense versus position tab and break down running backs a little more here as well. I like to look at rushing yards per game, receiving yards per game given up by the defenses, um, yards per catch, receptions, reception yards per catch, catch percentage that that defense has given up to the to running backs. I like to break it down into all of that when breaking down one running back versus another um, in terms of cash games. So again, I'm looking at running back touch share. Like quarterbacks, I'm comparing season average on DK points versus the last four games, touches per game, yards per game, how often are they on the field, what percentage of their team's touches are they getting, and then if you want to break it down a little bit further, you can start looking at red zone opportunities. Um, this is really splitting hairs between cash game running backs possibly but if you're very close and you only have one spot left and it comes down to just spitballing here not talking exactly cash games this week but just kind of looking at the numbers if it came down to james robinson and josh jacobs and the reason i'm using these two is because what stands out is their red zone they're in the same price range but their red zone opportunities are vastly different they're both getting 75 percent plus of their team red zone opportunities in terms of rushing but Josh Jacobs has 33 rushing attempts inside the 20 versus Robinson's 19. That would just right there push me in Josh Jacobs' direction in terms of cash games. So the red zone stuff is just kind of taking it a little bit further. Um, that's going to come in a little bit more when we talk GPPs as well. Same story for wide receivers. We're looking for opportunities. Again, spread um, plays a little bit into it, not as much as running backs, just because obviously um, we looked at we talked about Aaron Jones and a possible game script that favors him as a huge favorite for Green Bay. But Devonte Adams um, leads the league in targets per game. He's got even more over the last four games. Twenty six percent target share. He's going to get his. So if I was constructing and going with the fact or sorry, with the projection that Green Bay is going to blow this game out. I don't mind Aaron. I love Aaron Jones for the rushing side. But if you're not going with Aaron Jones, I don't mind going with Devontae Adams either. He's going to get his volume. Um, if it's going to be blown out, it means someone is getting the scores early to get it to a blowout situation. And Devontae Adams gets pretty much all the targets in that Green Bay offense. Very, very productive wide receiver, so you could definitely consider that. So we're looking at targets, targets per game over the last four. You can do the same thing with DraftKings scoring, DraftKings scoring over the last four. We're looking at matchup not only in receiving yards per game, which would be right here, opponent defensive rank is total receiving yards. This is fantasy points given up to the wide receiver. Uh, we're looking at red zone offense. We want a team that's obviously scoring a lot in the red zone, same as looking at um, the running back position. And then tight end is going to be the same there. But red zone targets you can look at as well. Uh, that's another reason why Devontae Adams stands out. He just gets fed heavily. I think he leads all wide receivers, uh, pass catchers, in red zone opportunities in terms of uh, targets. So that's one thing I look at. Same thing over on the tight end position. Um, targets per game. Now, this is going to change. I'm looking at the targets last four a little bit more for tight ends just because opportunity comes and goes a lot more for tight ends. So um, we definitely see some trends here. Uh, TJ Hawkinson has slowly gone up in terms of his targets all season. George Kittle has gone down. Now that's going to be skewed because he got hurt last game. Um, Dallas Goddard came in. Um, so his are going to be a little bit skewed. So players are coming in and out are going to... Um, you're going to have to really start breaking it down. And to do that, you can go over to on the bottom here and you can look at the targets database. So not only does it give you week by week for every player, tight end, wide receiver, running back, you can sort by average on the season, sort by what I like to do is um, average last four games and then I like to sort by team. So I can start breaking it down by team just to kind of see who's getting the target share in the offense and how it looks on a week-to-week -week basis, not just on the average basis. 
So if you slide over here and you can look at this a little bit more in terms of wide receivers and tight ends and running backs as well, but mostly for wide receivers I'm using this for, you can look at the actual target share um, and game by game targets and target share here. Um, we've got that over here on the right. This is the same as you will see over on the main tab here and the targets per game. So main thing with wide receivers, again, volume and consistency. So targets per game, targets per game loss four, target percentage, um, catch percentage is a big one. I'm not looking to pick out a player or, or X out a player that is maybe a little bit lower in catch percentage, but if I'm making a decision between Tyler Lockett and Travis Fulgham, not a great cash comparison because Lockett has not been a good cash play this year at all, but looking at their catch percentages, it's almost a 10% difference in catch percentage, right around the same amount of targets per game. So Lockett has been more solid than Fulgham overall. Um, but then you're going to start breaking it down a little bit further. So that catch percentage definitely comes into play as well. And I will talk about the wide receivers and some of these other stats a little bit more when we get into the GPP video. Defenses for cash games. Uh, sacks are number one for me. So that's the number one place I'm going to go look is sacks. But I also want to look at the matchup. So I'm looking at um, this is adjusted sack rate. So it kind of looks at who was their opponent each and every week and how they rank. So... Steelers rank number two. Um, their opponent's offensive line ranks 27th, which is Cincinnati. That is a difference of 25. So in this difference column is the, you know what I'm looking at for defenses to first pop off because that way you're looking at defenses that are good D-lines versus offenses that are bad O-lines. Um, Pittsburgh is the number one that stands out. That's why they're the most expensive. 32 sacks on the season. Cincinnati's given up 28 sacks. Um and then we've got blitz percentage here as well. So we know Pittsburgh blitzes a lot. So that just creates a very high floor. Sacks create a high floor. Turnovers aren't as predictable. Um, they're not as consistent as, um, you know, a team's defensive line and how they gather their sacks. So sacks is going to be number one for me in terms of cash games. So Steelers would definitely stand out. Going a little bit cheaper, Washington's defense stands out here. They're number one versus number 21. That's a difference of 20. So that's the way I'm looking at that there as well. So that's some stuff I'm looking at from a cash game perspective on a week-to-week -week basis. So definitely come back to this video um, and review it. You know, if, if you get a couple weeks down the line and you kind of forget a few things, definitely come back and check this out. Um, this is set up for week 10, but it's my strategy does not change every week and how I go through and set up my cash game plays. Start with a big player pool, and I just keep narrowing that player pool down using the stats that I've lined out in this video. Thanks for checking it out. Like and subscribe. More videos to come here for us. Um, leave, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will make sure to get back to you. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Good luck this week.